This is the Luba, a new all-wheel drive wireless robot mower by Momotion. And this is one of the toughest properties with all of the kryptonites of robot mowers, so we can give it a proper test. I've been out here for about 20 hours just walking around following it in the rain to give you guys a proper opinion with some real in-depth review. Most of you probably think of me as a robot vacuum guy, but my journey actually started right here on this property with robot mowers and I've spent about 100 hours trying to make an Ambrosio L250 work here before I finally gave up. We're giving away a Luba to one lucky viewer. All you have to do is comment, subscribe to the Robomate TV YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up button. I'll give more details at the end of the video. The reason this property is so difficult is because in places it is incredibly steep. It has over 5,000 square meters of very tough Kikuyu grass. It's bumpy, muddy, and separated by driveways and paths. The combination of these things made me eventually believe it was just impossible for any robot mower to manage. When I discovered Luba with its four-wheel drive, smart mapping, wireless system, I knew this was the perfect challenge, but my expectations were still low. In my frustrations, I went as far as designing a robot mower for these tough lifestyle properties. However, in the five years since, nothing has come to market that gave me much hope. The Luba is the most unique robot on the market and probably the only mower that could cut the grass here in these conditions as you certainly can't do it with a ride on and it'd be dangerous to push it as I've already slipped over a few times. Despite its cute looks and diminutive size, it is very solid and weighs significantly more than other larger robots. It is the only robot to combine all-wheel drive, RTK, a dual cutting deck and smart software and I'll explain why that combination makes it a game changer for many properties. As it had been raining for weeks, the grass hadn't been cut for quite some time before I began my tests. The Kakuya grass is notoriously tough and my 45 horsepower tractor struggles at times, so this was a pretty surprising start, slashing down grass as tall as the mower itself in places. My motion suggests not cutting during rain, however I wanted to push its limits and it performed well although some of the clippings were clogging the blade deck. This should be rare under normal conditions. At 400 millimeters, the cutting width is amongst the widest in its category. Usually the larger the cutting size, the less power it has. However, the Luba also has twin cutting motors and it is the most powerful robot mower I've tested. Looking close at the grass after my second mow, the cut quality is also very good and the patterns are simply captivating. Despite the conditions, the lawn was starting to look rather impressive after its first pass. Long clippings like this are bad for the health of the grass, however in future runs it will only be shaving off a few days growth at a time. These small clippings don't choke the grass and quickly compost, essentially fertilizing the lawn with each mow. Most ride-on lawnmowers have thick blades which flatten the grass as they cut. If you imagine looking from a bird's eye view, when the grass is lying flat, it is blocking sun from about 30 to 50% of the grass blades for much of the day. If you program your robot to cut from different angles and regularly, after a few months, these two things will result in a lawn that few humans could ever achieve. The Luba has virtually 100% coverage of the selected area every time. However, you will still have to trim the edges occasionally the old fashioned way. You can never see how steep things are in videos, but this is virtually a bank. Uh, with the Ambrosio, I spent tens of hours trying to make it cut this hill. I even got to the point where I was epoxying a dive weight to the front to try and stop it from tipping over backwards. However, I never could get it to do it reliably at all. I put this out here in long grass. It was in torrential pouring rain right in the middle of it, and it came out and it did the whole thing without getting stuck once. There's only one little thing that was wrong, and that was when it was maneuvering. I deliberately made it maneuver in the steepest possible part, so I could have made it easier, but when it was maneuvering, it would slip down slightly, and it was missing just a little bit at the start of its run. This wouldn't normally be a problem at all if the grass was already short, because you would barely see it, and then it would get it in the subsequent mows. Not only is it steep, but I'm filming this mid-winter in the wettest year in New Zealand's history. It feels like it hasn't stopped raining for months on end and everywhere is soggy underfoot with plenty of mud pits for the mower to play in. I excluded a couple of areas where a drain was blocked with no-go zones but the conditions everywhere 
were still brutal for a robot mower. The mower has now done over 50 hours of work and has only got stuck once, which is nothing short of miraculous. This is mostly thanks to the all-wheel drive system and those thick rubber tyres with the low ground pressure. The mower is also quite heavy with a low centre of gravity and proper suspension to keep those chunky wheels on the ground. With a first generation robot, I expect the software and logic around problems like this to be kinda dumb. But Momotion's parent company, Agile X, specialise in all-terrain robots. A couple of times I've been watching it slipping and thought it was stuck, but then it would try a different angle and even run each wheel at different speeds until it would just fall itself out. Traction is always the biggest challenge for a robot mower if you have any incline at all, and not only when it's muddy. In summer there will be different challenges, as dry grass also provides little traction, and around here the ground will also start to crack up. I am reviewing the Luba 5000, however there are two other models, the 1000 and the 3000. In reality, there is very little difference between the range, except the model numbers seem to refer to the square meterage that they can cover. Incidentally, I am mowing a bit over the theoretical maximum, and don't feel like I'm near capacity. The 5000 has a runtime of a bit over 3 hours, and takes about 1.5 to 2 hours to recharge. If it needs to recharge mid-mow, it will return to base, then continue from where it was up to later. You can vary the cut speed and how much the mower overlaps through the app and on maximum speed it seems to cut at about 70% the speed that a human would with a push mower. Obviously, a slow speed with a lot of overlap is recommended for the first few cuts and then you can speed it up later. I have chosen to split this property up into three separate schedules that come out once per week. You can also adjust the cutting height through the app too. It ranges from 30mm on the lowest setting up to 70 mils on the highest. You can adjust this while it is mowing, or set different heights for each area in your schedule. I like the layout of the app, although there are a few minor things that can be improved. Overall I find it intuitive, and because it is smart mapping, it has a lot more options than other robot mowers that I've used. They also have the ability to do firmware updates over the Wi-Fi, and the potential is limitless. You can connect to the mower via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, However, it doesn't have a SIM card on board. This means you can control the mower through the app when you aren't home, except it may disconnect when away from the Wi-Fi coverage. It'll keep mowing and automatically reconnect when it returns to Wi-Fi. I thought this was going to be quite problematic, but it doesn't seem to be much of a problem at all. In terms of safety, it uses multiple safety blades that rely on centrifugal force and are much safer than a traditional blade. The blade will automatically lock if the robot lifts up, and there's a guard around the cutting deck that makes it tough to get hands in from the side. Overall, I am certain it is incomparably safer than using a manual mower. There is a key that is required for the robot to operate, and it would be useless for anyone to steal it without the base and RTK station too. I'm going to fit a tracking device to mine, and it's also possible to get it covered under your house insurance as well. The Luber is one of the first to use a wireless system called RTK which is essentially GPS that triangulates with the local receiver that is included with the robot. I wasn't sure what to expect from this, but it was shockingly accurate. It also makes set up a breeze, and even the most complicated properties can be fully set up in a couple of hours. It's actually one of the easiest devices I've ever set up. You just plug it in, then connect to the Motion app through Bluetooth, and remote control the mower around the perimeter of the lawn. So if you go really close to the walls, the impressive thing is the GPS is actually accurate enough that it will do exactly on the same spot we've got. So if you touch the wood at all, or touch a fence or anything, you will want to adjust that in future because it will consistently hit it on every subsequent uh, mowing run. I say as I hit the fence. For people new to robots like this, most robot mowers require a perimeter wire buried around the edge of the lawn and around any obstacles. Aside from the obvious installation advantage here, the mapping ability also gives it a number of intelligent features that random navigation robots just don't have. 
It means that the mower cuts methodically and leaves beautiful straight lines. You can adjust the cutting angle through the app for stunning patterns, and this means that it will also cut large lawns in a fraction of the time. You can easily update the map in future if you want to optimize it. On a wire robot, if there is a puddle you want to avoid, you'll have to dig up the wire and then rebury it. With no-go zones, you simply remote control the mower around the area and it won't go there again in future. In New Zealand, for a couple of months per year, you can almost see the grass growing. During this season, there are spots that need to be mowed daily, otherwise the mower won't be able to keep up with it. With random robots, this is a very big problem, as even if you schedule it to mow, you can't be certain it will go where you want it to, and it often causes problems. With RTK robots, you can schedule that area to be mowed more frequently and avoid the issue entirely. I've had no issues at all with the RTK connection on this property, even around the tree line. However, I would caution to people that have a lot of tree cover or in small urban properties with narrow gaps between buildings, as it does rely on connection to satellites. In urban areas, my motion advised to place the RTK station on the roof of the house. So one little thing that could be a massive improvement is that when it returns to base, the GPS is almost too accurate and it takes the exact same path back to dock. Obviously when it's ridiculously wet like this, it does start to damage the grass. However, I think it could be a pretty simple little update for them to do through the software so that it takes a little different route every time. They also included this rubber mat in the box and I don't think it said in the instructions, but I have assumed that it's for putting in front of the base because it's a skid steer mower. When it returns from here, it'll skid on the spot, align itself with the base and go back. So obviously that's gonna tear the grass up with regular use. So I've put this rubber mat down and I'm pretty sure that given a bit of time the grass will start to grow through it and it will look good again. So overall I absolutely love this little thing. It has coped with this near impossible property. As I said I've tried for hundreds of hours to try and make robot mowers work here and this has worked pretty much out of the box. Uh, there are a few little minor negatives but most of them are things that can be updated with software updates in future. So I expect it to just get a little bit more polished. I think it's safe to say that the Luba is the mower I have been waiting for for the past five years. The traction is frankly incredible. The navigation and wire-free setup make things a complete breeze. That dual cutting deck means it has heaps of cutting power, even for the toughest of grasses, and the final result is mesmerizing. This is what a robot should be, something that makes it easy to automate a tough job but actually does it better than what you can do yourself. Given my history with robot mowers, this is probably the most excited I've been about a piece of tech. I'm gonna do another review in summertime and let you guys see what it looks like after it's been on for a couple of months. I know that the grass quality will get a lot better. You'll barely recognize it. I'm pretty sure that it will do a golf course green sort of look. We're just going to have a bit of a go, see how good it is at herding the sheep as well. You know, just got to keep the competition on its toes. Pretty good if you can't whistle like me for a dog. <laughs> As I said earlier, we're giving away a Luba to a lucky viewer. We'll send it anywhere in the world, provided you follow a few terms and conditions in the YouTube description below. I gotta say below. that this thing is actually to pretty enter, fast. All you the need Bluetooth to do is remote, like this super video, responsive. subscribe so to the Robomate TV YouTube channel, and leave us a comment as well down below. I like to answer questions as it helps others, however if you're lazy you can just say hi. Sadly, I have to warn you to beware of scammers that will impersonate us to try and steal your money. I will personally draw the winner live on the Robomate TV YouTube channel, so make sure to check in there.